زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series of Marriage and Divorce. With myself here, we have our Sheikh Faitham al Haddad, who is currently residing in the UK and is on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain. He's also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. In our previous episode, we touched on the topic of the wali and his role that is played during the lead up to marriage and during the nikah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We wanted to continue this very important topic of the wali. We were discussing last time the role that the wali plays and the importance and how the wali is basically giving permission to the husband to be to take his place in the woman's life. Yes. Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. If I remember correctly, that in the previous episode, I was explaining the philosophy behind the wali. The philosophy, the wisdom, the hikmah. I said that any woman, any girl, needs a man in her life. Yeah? Especially when she reaches the age of puberty, she needs a man in her life. And that's why in Islam in general, yeah, Islam encourages parents to let their daughters marry as young as possible. Marry the Islamic marriage. We will come to the issue of age. We will discuss it, inshallah. Yeah? Now, when she reaches, when the girl reaches the age of puberty, naturally, she needs a man in her life. Who is that man? He is her father. Typical situation. Sometimes the father is not there. The mother should be careful and look for a man in their life, either the brother or an uncle, someone like this. If the daughter does not find that there is a man in their life, she will look for a man outside the family, and that's why she might fall into haram. And the men or the boys will take advantage, and they will hunt. Okay? So this has to be understood. That's why Sharia said, see the philosophy of Sharia. Sharia said that in case of a divorce, yeah, the children will remain with their mother provided that the mother does not marry to another man. Okay? However, once the daughter reaches the age of puberty, she needs to join her father. Okay? The boy will be consulted. The boy will be consulted. Either to go with the father or to go with the mother. Now, there are some exceptions. Okay? Normally, when I discuss these things, Immediately, sisters say, what about if the father is not fit to take the role of a father? This is an exception. Exceptions. Let us not discuss those exceptions. Otherwise, we will say, as we said, the children will go with the mother. What about if the mother is not qualified to look after the children? Same thing. We are not talking about exceptions. Yeah? And some people quote what Ibn Taymiyyah said, and that, that the children should go with the best person for them with their... These are exceptions. The norm is, as we said, why is this? Because the lady, as the fuqaha, subhanallah, the jurist said that the girl, when she reaches the age of puberty, she needs a man to look after her for the purpose of marriage. Now, maybe they mentioned it like this. And in our, maybe, modern language, we say that she needs a man in her life. If she does not find it in her household, she will look for it yeah, outside. And that's why she might fall into haram. That's why women, divorcees, divorcees, sisters, they should make sure that if they are divorcees and they have no option but to be divorced, okay, they should take into consideration the situation of their daughters. And many of the girls who fell in zina, 
in haram relationship fell in haram relationship at the age of what do you think puberty puberty 12 13 subhanallah 12 13 we, we consider that a very young age but puberty very young age is a woman yes very young age they fall into this why because there is no man in her life and she's vulnerable and she she will be attracted to boys not attracted not necessarily sexually so maybe some people will say what do you mean by a man in her life i'm not talking a man to fulfill her sexual desire no no to fulfill her emotional needs to see that there is a man protecting her a man looking after her yeah this is the point so she will look for a man to look after her outside and the men normally men are like wolves when they see vulnerable sisters I agree that's why sharia said don't put the sheep next to the wolf yeah now no one can say that women are wolves maybe some of them this is an exception again but in reality who are the wolves the men, the men. yeah okay they are physically strong etc etc they take advantage and normally rape is done by who? Women against men or men against women? Men against women. Men against women. So the men are the wolves. So don't put a wolf next to a sheep. Yeah? Or next to sheep. Because the wolf will keep killing all of them. Mm-hmm. And the man will keep taking advantage of all of them. This is a reality, Akhi. It is. This is a reality. Why are we denying this reality? You remember yesterday or the day before yesterday, we were sitting with... Uh, Dr. Zach Naik. Yeah? You remember when we discussed this issue of Western lifestyle and etc. and some of the statistics. And what did he say about he is updating his uh, records of rape again. Yeah? When he discussed why women need to wear hijab etc. And normally he presents some statistics in order to prove that women are vulnerable and they need protection. And that's why mixing leads to raping and leads to other problems so he said the highest rate of rapes is in the u.s you remember yes and he said now he made the calculation quickly as he used to do blah 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 blah, 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 blah. which means that every two seconds there is a woman to be raped in the u.s yeah not a man to be raped in the u.s same thing in the uk i remember my data was in 2008 in 2008, the reported rapes in the UK were 167 or 76 a day. These are the reported rapes. Now, some of them, they expect that the reported rapes are just 30%. Maximum, I think. That's, yeah, that's a 30%. Some of them, they say, no, it goes down to 10%. Okay, whatever. So, why to put sisters in that situation? Why to put girls, daughters in that situation? So, she needs what? She needs a man to look after her. Now, the wali, who was the man in her life, is telling her, my dear daughter, I was your man. Now, your man is this person. So, he is officially handing her over to the man or handing his job his role over to the husband over to the husband he said i was the man okay now the man this job has been taken by your husband under my supervision okay the any the, the transfer i am the one who did this i am the one who gave it is it clear? Okay. So she even will feel secure that now my main man is the husband, but also this has been done not by myself alone, but my father. He's the one who did it. So she would might feel even more secure. More secure. Okay. So this is part of the philosophy of the job of the wali. Another element of the philosophy of the wali yeah 
Another important one, in fact, is that girls are obliged and maybe forced to preserve the ties of kinship with their men, with their parents, with their fathers, with their brothers, with their uncles, etc. How is this? If she needs a wali, it means that she needs me as a father. If my daughter cannot get married except with my consent as a father, it means that she, what? She needs me. Agree or not? Agree. So if she needs me, then she should maintain good relationship with me. Agree? So this helps her to maintain what? The ties of kinship. And this is what I always say to girls. Be careful. You need your parents. You need the support of your father. You need the support of your mother. You need this network. You need everything. Okay? From this network or many things from this network. Make sure that you keep good relationship with them. Don't disassociate yourself from the family, from your father in particular. And then all of a sudden say to your father, well, a brother of a good dean, good standard, etc., is proposing, and I would like to go for that proposal. It doesn't work like this. I mean, as we mentioned, the family is the cornerstone of society, but at the same time, family is essential for the individuals as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for the society and the individuals. So this is one element. But there is another element, which is part of the fact that the daughter needs her father. Okay? We are running out of time. I have a very interesting story about this issue, um, an incident that happened with me, uh, maybe. We'll uh, continue, inshallah, after the break. After, after the, the break, break, inshallah, yeah, inshallah. 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 Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? There is a misconception. You choose. Beauty. Wealth. Family status. Virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this. While others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal. halal. While others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are, you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al-Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam next on Peace TV. Images, images, and depictions, and depictions of our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam have spread around the globe. May endless blessings be upon thee. His life is being examined in the glare of the global media spotlight. It is the duty of every Muslim, every Muslim to present to the world the truth of his life and the excellence of his character. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy. To the universe. To do this, 
You have to know your profit. It's something that you simply can't afford to be ignorant of. Send your peace on your slave Muhammad. Study the exemplary personality of our Prophet, peace be upon him, which attracts people of all faiths and nationalities in Know Your Prophet, peace be upon him. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this episode where we shall continue to talk about the role of the wali during the marriage procedure. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. You were just about to tell us an interesting story about the, something to do along the lines of the wali. Yeah, okay. The second year of my arrival to the UK, I was the Imam of Al Muntad al Islami. One of my students invited me to do the nikah contract for him. I'm not that person who is interested in doing the nikah, but he said that the fiancé is also one of your students. Please do come. Anyway, we went. I went. I thought that I will go to their house. Okay. Do it very simple. When I went, there was a big hall. People are coming. And anyway, they took me to the stage as a sheikh, as the imam, as the one who is going to do the nikah. That was when? At least 12, maybe, or 11, 12 years ago. So I went and I sat on the stage, and the brother was here. Some people were here. I don't know them. So I turned to him. I said, where is the father of the sister you want to marry? So he said, that is her stepfather. Now, I am new to the culture, but I know the word stepfather, what does it mean? But I was a bit confused. What does he really mean? So I said, what do you mean, stepfather, her stepfather? What do you mean? I know what does a stepfather mean. He said, no, her father left them a long time ago, and... She doesn't know anything about him, and this is he is the one who looked after her. So he's the stepfather. He got married to her mother, looked after her, etc. I said, We need her father. He said, Why? I said, He's the wali. He said, This is the wali. I said, No, no, this is not the wali. He said, Are you serious? I said, Yes, I am serious. Then the discussion took place like this, and uh, in front of everyone, we are on the stage. So the stepfather came. It happened that this stepfather, I can mention yeah, any some details, although it not will be distinguished. He speaks Urdu and Arabic. So he said, do you speak Arabic? I said, I speak Arabic. He said, what's wrong? I said, yeah, and we are discussing with him the conditions for nikah. And this is a wedding now. And I want to water it down as much as I can because of the context, because of the situation. So I tried to make it easy. So I said, we just want to see things. He said, what, what, what? When he said, what is it? So I said, we are discussing the issue of the wali. He said, another, I'm the wali. I'm the wali. I said, uh, not really. I had to be honest with him. I said to him, not really. He said, what? I said, the wali is the father. He said, I looked after her. I looked after her. Her father abandoned her. So how are you telling me that you, you need a wali? I am the wali. I said, okay, let us first of all find where the father is. He said, what is this discussion? I said, I turned to the brother. I told him, take me to her mother. So anyway, uh, he rang her mother. The mother came on the side. I said, where is your ex-husband? She said, why? I said, because he's the wali. And she said, I don't know anything about him. I said, come on. You don't know anything? He's the father of your daughter. How come? She said, no, etc., etc. Anyway, 
the discussion escalated and I said to them, well, sorry, I cannot do the nikah. I cannot do the nikah. I need to know where the father is. One of the conditions was not If he died, do you have any certificate that he died? Do you have any witnesses that he died? Just to tell me that he disappeared, I left. Yeah? Some of the students were with me, so we left. And they said, if this is the Islamic condition, just do it. Don't compromise. I said, no, I will never compromise. So I left. What happened is that the sister with the brother decided to get married just like this in front of the people because they have a, a whole wedding, etc. So they brought another imam, yeah, and he just done the nikah. But they did not do anything because anyway, their arrangement was that she will stay with her parents for some time and he will stay with his parents for some time. Then the, the sister called me. She said, Sheikh Haytham, please help me. This is the situation. I said, no, you have to find your father. How can he disappear? Well, I don't know. He left me when I was seven, etc. I said, you have to know where your father is. He's your wali. He is your wali. Anyway, she said, what about if he died? I said, if he died, we need a certificate. Get some certificate. I said, don't you know any of his relatives? She said, no. I said, even, even maintaining the ties of kinship, you are not doing it. This is your father. You have to maintain the rights of the kinship. Anyway, she said, let me try. The next day she called me and she said that she found her uncle. Her uncle spoke to me over the phone. I said, where is your brother? He said, I don't know. I said, come on, Akhi. You can't tell me you don't know, you don't know. Now this becomes like, as they say, Indian films. Okay? I cannot accept this. Just tell me where the father is. Anyway, I said to her sister, this is not acceptable. I need the father. And you are telling me that you found your uncle. In one day you found your uncle. Maybe give it two or three days. You will find your father. No way, Shaykhaytham, don't be difficult. I said, well, this is what Islam says. Subhanallah, I swear by Allah that that incident or the marriage or the wedding was either on Saturday or on Sunday, one of the weekend days. On Wednesday, she found the father. Big change, big difference. She found the father. And then we agreed that he, the father will come and he will consent to the marriage. I remember the case. On Friday, they came. The father came, the real, real father came. She came and the husband came. The father even came with his uh, second wife, with the children from the second wife. And his second wife was a very reasonable, wise lady. She came dressed and she brought the, her children dressed as well. And because I insisted that she brings her father... Subhanallah, she met her father for the first time after almost 20 years. Subhanallah. For the first time. Because of what? Because of what? Because of Sharia. You need the consent of your father. Yes, it is not only for protection. Mm. But you will maintain the ties of kinship. If you need him, you will look where he is. And because of this, she came to know where her father is. And the very strange thing about this scenario, they used to live a few miles apart from each other. In London, in West London. Okay? Not even one in South West London or and the other one in North West London. No, both of them almost in the same area. And she has never seen him for almost 20 years. And the other thing is, his wife, second wife, she brought gifts and etc. And she was happy. It should be she was, she, she was, wallahi, she was, may Allah give her barakah. Okay, if she sees the program or, yeah. She was happy. And she brought her children. And she said to them, this is your sister. So now yes. those knew that they have a sister for the first time. And she never knew that she had brothers and sisters from 
her father. For the first time she knew about them because of this. And the father, he was so westernized. In the beginning, he did not accept it. Yeah? He said, I have nothing to do with her. Look, this is another problem that has to be solved, which is one of the elements of the philosophy or the wisdom of what? Of having a wali, which is the wali will be responsible. He has to take his role. He has to be responsible and he has to carry the responsibility as what? As a wali. Okay? So then he was pushed by his wife and then he acted as a wali and as a father. Allah, and inshallah they're still happy and maintaining the ties of kinship. Uh, inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. So this lady, who was a very wise lady, she brought her brothers and for the first time those brothers knew that they have a sister. And for this sister, for this girl, for the first time she knew that she had brothers and sisters from her father's side. Hadn't she insisted that she doesn't want or she doesn't know anything about her father? Had me as a, an imam accepted this marriage without her father's presence, then it would have gone and maybe she will continue living all of her life without knowing about her father, without knowing about her brothers and sisters, without knowing anything about her siblings. And wallahi, I have these similar cases repeated many times. And that's why I say to sisters, be careful. You need to maintain the kinship. This is part of yeah, the, the wisdom of the Sharia. Yeah. This is part of the wisdom. Why we need the wali. It brings the family together. This is a Allah khair, Sheikh. Brothers and sisters, we have to conclude that episode now. But please come back to us next time when we shall continue with the topic of the wali. And I have some very important questions which I myself would like to clear up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.